Welcome to Casey Cook's Culinary Trends from the Akashic Records. Today the Akashic Records has brought us a completely raw vegetable salad by way of Edgar Casey readings. Edgar Casey recommended raw vegetables to the majority of people that he gave dietary recommendations to. It's a very big theme of his. Cooked vegetables as well, but raw was really important. I think raw vegetables are a little harder to warm up to for a lot of people. If you're used to eating salads, and they're more typical in our day certainly than they were then, but cooked vegetables are easier to sort of get used to, but raw vegetables can be difficult for a lot of people. But you really have to try. It's very important. And to a large group of people, he not only said eat raw vegetables occasionally or at meals or with meals, but he said have one meal a day, preferably the noon meal, that consists of nothing but raw vegetables. Now he didn't say exactly why, but we do know that digestive system uses different enzymes to digest cooked foods and raw foods so maybe it was a way of just giving our stomachs a break and saying rather than multitasking we're just going to give you raw today or maybe it was just because it's super alkalizing if you know anything about Casey's alkaline acid balance he wanted us to be an 80-20 percent alkaline balance and raw fruits and vegetables bring us most of what of the alkaline forming foods in our diet so this would be a huge alkaline boost but he didn't actually say he just recommended enough times that I know it's important he never said eat raw vegetables in a salad like this and it'll help your diabetes or asthma or emphysema but it was a general support thing it was just good for the body it would help the body optimize its natural ability to heal itself and to function to function at its best so okay let's get started in terms of the vegetables that you choose, Casey gave long lists. You can basically choose anything raw and edible, so choose what you like. But he did say that if you can buy vegetables or eat vegetables that were raised near where you live, where you're planted, where they're planted near where you're planted, that it's going to be a lot better for you. So I try to do this. He did not say it's not good to eat vegetables that come from farther away. He just said it's always better to eat the ones that are, are grown near you. I live in a city and don't grow my own vegetables, don't live near anyone who's growing them, but I belong to a CSA, which is Community Exported Agriculture, where the farmers bring us the vegetables once a week, and you never quite know what you're getting, but I kind of like that. It's always fresh picked, and it's always local. I do it all year long, so it's kind of interesting to have a salad during the winter, but I'll show you how I do that sometimes. It's very different. Right now it's spring, and we have gotten here um, some nice spinach. Um, this little pile right here. I've already chopped these in advance because I didn't want to waste your time watching me chop. So I'm just showing you. We've got some spinach. We have some beautiful purplish kale. Um, and when you cut your kale, I just want to remind you, you just pull off the stem because the stem is really tough and not so good to eat. And this is, I didn't touch spinach. This is a piece of Savoy cabbage from a huge head of Savoy cabbage. Fabulous in a salad. A lot of people don't think about cabbage that much mixing it with greens, but it's very crunchy and sweet and it's wonderful. Casey recommended cabbage to over 100 people. It's a great, great vegetable. Okay, then, so these are all of our leafy greens, and these are what I chopped in advance. And I'll tell you about chopping in a minute. Then here we have two more things which are from above the ground, and these are our below the ground vegetables. Casey always recommended a good above the ground, below the ground balance. He said approximately one to three, like three times as many above the ground vegetables as the below the ground. I don't think you need to weigh it or measure it in any particular way. I just kind of eyeball it. He said number of, but you know, if you only had, say I only had cabbage today, I would use a larger volume of cabbage and maybe three small below the ground vegetables. So I don't think the count is as important as the quantity. So I eyeball it and I always use, you know, about one third this to two thirds this or one quarter this to three quarters of, of the above. Okay, so in addition to these from above the ground, our leafy greens, we have a couple non-leafy greens, which I'm going to just show you in a point. It's springtime here, as I might have mentioned, and so the vegetables that we're getting are really, um, they're beautiful spring vegetables. This is a, a fennel bulb. It had big fronds on top of it. You cut the fronds off, and if you just slice a little bit of this in your salad, I think it's wonderful. It gives wonderful flavor. It has kind of a licorice flavor to it. I'm just going to put a little bit in. Um, Casey never recommended fennel. It really wasn't, you know, food's going trends. It wasn't something they were eating in the day, per se. Um, he recommended 
fennel and dog fennel a lot as part of a medicine when he was recommending some formula where you threw, you know, two drops of this and three drops of that. There was there was some fennel in that. So um, we did talk about fennel, but not in the salad. But anyway, it is a raw vegetable. It's wonderful. Um, asparagus he did talk about. We're going to just take some raw asparagus tips because it's, it's wonderful spring energy. This is what's growing in the spring. And so it's beautiful to put everything that's coming out of the ground in that season into your salad. Okay, so if you'll notice, I've chopped everything very small. Casey was very specific about how he said we're supposed to chop our salad. He wanted everything in teeny little pieces. He said, chop it finely, uh, grate it, scrape it, grind it. He told one person, if your salad gets too liquidy, eat it with a spoon. He wanted this wetness. He said that as we would do these things to them, grate them or chop them, it would release the juices, the water in the vegetables and stuff. So this is about how I do it. I chop over and over. I took all of these and it becomes sort of, I call it confetti-like. All right, for the harder vegetables, the below the ground vegetables, he said to grate. I mean, you can do a lot of different things, so you can chop these fine as well, but grating was his most common recommendation for these types of vegetables. He said grate lettuce, tomatoes, everything, but that's almost impossible to do. So I go with the fine chop for most of that. What Casey said about carrots is that the top part, right on the very top of the carrot, is the most important part, the most nutritious. So you never want to chop a carrot off right here. That's why I cut my leaves here, and then right before I eat it, I carefully peel back the stems. You take the base of the stems and you take them off and you get to the center. Now some carrots it's more pronounced than others but there's a little mound there and never cut that off. That's really important. Now there is sometimes some um, greening at the top, a little discoloration and if that bothers you don't chop it off. I either go in very carefully with my thumbnail because I just like to do that or you can take a paring knife and, and kind of remove some of that I understand it's not bad for you anyway, but okay, so we know really important to keep this. And if you're not going to use the whole carrot, you should check it lengthwise. That's what my macrobiotics teacher always taught me. It's what the ancient Chinese medicine people do. The energy of the carrot flows down. Like Casey said, this is the most important part. So if you're not going to use the whole carrot, you want the energy to be evenly distributed. I take a little hand grater. You can do a lot of different things. I mean, you can put it in a food processor. But Casey said the most important thing is that as you're grating, that the juice goes into the salad. You don't want to lose any of the juice that comes from the grating process. So I grate directly into the bowl. It just takes a minute. It's pretty easy. Um, if you don't want to grate, like I said, you can use a food processor, you can use a Vitamix or a Ninja or something and do it that way. Just make sure the, the water, all the juice gets directly into the salad. Don't ever buy grated carrots from the grocery store because they're dried out. That's the whole point. We want the wetness. We want the juice that's being released. This is a beet. Um, it's a half a beet, cut lengthwise also. It's um, not peeled. It's clean. Also, I want to mention the carrot was not peeled. Casey said in most cases, the outer skin of a vegetable is the most nutritious part. So before you go peel and everything to make it look prettier, just know that you can eat almost every skin. Okay, so we're going to put about a quarter of this half of a beet in there, so not too much. Some people, Casey said, raw beets weren't good for them. Most people, he said it was okay, but not a huge amount. Uh, they, I seem to do okay with it. I do raw beets in my salad a lot. It has beautiful color. Just get that beet energy. I'm going to take this radish. Now I'm going to pull the greens off. But Casey said, if the greens are in good shape, if they're fresh enough, and this was freshly picked, then put the greens in the salad too. So here I'm going to go ahead and grate about half of this radish in there. I'm not a huge fan of radishes, but I know it's good, good spring energy. Then I'm going to take the greens and give them just a little chop and throw them on top of that. And then finally I'm going to put a little bit of this green onion. Now the beet and the carrot, I'll just use them tomorrow. I'm not really big on a lot of onion in salad, but I take some green onion and I usually start from the green end. A little easier to digest. And I just do a fine chop on that. Everything gets finely chopped in a Casey salad. And I will tell you that this isn't the only way he said to do a salad. It's the most frequent 
recommendation was this finely chopped wet grated salad. He said that over and over and over again. So we know that was really important. The next thing, once you've got your salad all chopped up, Casey recommended to a large number of people that they have their grated chopped raw vegetables in gelatin. Now, what does he mean by in gelatin? A lot of people over the years, Casey people, have interpreted that to mean that you take gelatin, you dissolve it in hot water as if we're going to make a jello, and you um, pour it on your vegetables and set it in the refrigerator and chill it and eat it the next day or whatever. You can do that, and a lot of people do that, and there are certainly recipes out there in Casey books about that. I know that, and I've experimented with this a lot, that if you take the gelatin and you put it directly on the salad, because it's wet now, Sprinkle, I sprinkle it kind of in the middle so it gets right on the grated vegetables and you start to mix it in and I push it down a little bit so that it doesn't get stuck on the sides of the bowl. Some of it will get stuck on the sides of the bowl but that's not a problem. It absolutely dissolves. I promise you if you eat your salad like this you're not going to be tasting gelatin. There's not going to be any lumps. It absolutely dissolves. So it's my belief that this will work for what Casey was trying to accomplish. He said to have vegetables in gelatin would help us to assimilate the nutrients in the vegetables more easily. So it was a really important good thing to do. And I don't think you need to chill it and eat it like a salad, like a jello salad. This works great, I think. I've been doing this for many years. I don't have a problem with it. Some might get stuck on the side of the bowl. I wouldn't worry about that. I've actually measured in the past, put some in, get it stuck on the bowl and see how much is left in the bottom and um, even though it feels like a lot might be stuck, well today I didn't do, if you push it down to the center you don't lose too much of the gelatin, but you're still getting most of the gelatin. Okay, let's talk for just a minute about gelatin. Let's just back up. This one that I'm using is a beef gelatin. If that sounds gross to you, just know that all gelatin comes from the connective tissues of animals, so that's just the way it is. If you're vegan, don't do gelatin. Um, this one I get online. There's also, um, you can buy one from Bar. Uh, bar products, they sell a gelatin, and um, Casey frequently recommended Knox gelatin, plain gelatin, and they still sell that today. As far as the amount, now I use today, I keep my little measuring spoon right in my gelatin bag. This is a half teaspoon. Casey never gave an amount when he talked about gelatin for uh, to be had with your grated and chopped raw vegetables. I think he probably assumed that if you were going to do it the dissolve and refrigerate method that it came in a little package and you didn't have to measure it. it was the package amount usually in those packages it's one tablespoon but that's usually four serving sizes so if you translate that you know three three teaspoons to a tablespoon this would be uh you know about if, if for one serving size i do a half of a teaspoon when casey recommended gelatin for people just mixing it in juice and he recommended that to a lot of people just mixing gelatin in, in juice and drinking it that way he usually said a half a teaspoonful or a half a teaspoonful a day, maybe divided twice, like a quarter teaspoonful and a glass of juice twice a day. So I think this is a good amount. Um, I wouldn't go a lot more than this. We won't get into gelatin a lot right now and uh, the pros and cons of gelatin and what it does, but you can have too much gelatin. So I think this is a great amount, one half teaspoon. Next thing we have to think about is dressing. Most frequently recommended by Casey was olive oil. He said cold pressed olive oil which is the same as extra virgin. It just means it was never heated when the oil was being extracted from the olives. So, uh, and the heat can chemically change it and, and nutritionally change it. So you wanna make sure when you use olive oil that you get a good um, extra virgin one. Um, you can measure if you want. I make salad every day, so I sort of know about how much. That's about one to one and a half tablespoons. I just kind of eyeball it. You're perfectly free to measure it if you want. In terms of what else to put with it, Casey was not big on vinegar. He recommended to a lot of people, but it was way too acidic for their stomachs. I have a delicate stomach somewhat, and so I just stay away from it. I don't, I don't do vinegar. You can do vinegar. He did not ever, don't misunderstand me. He never said, don't anybody have vinegar. There were just a lot of people that he told them to stay away from it, so I choose to. This is something called Umi Plum Vinegar. It's an Eden product. It's not really a vinegar. It's a fermentation of the Umabashi Plum used in Asian cooking, and I think it's wonderful. It's not acidic at all. It's very salty, so when you put this on, and I just sprinkle some on, it really gives it a wonderful, bright, salty flavor. You don't need much else. Um, but today I'm going to add in just a little touch of, this is a smoked paprika. 
Casey recommended paprika and a lot of salad, just something to kick it up a little bit. You can you can do a lot of things to your salad. Sometimes I'll get from my farm share dill or cilantro or, or ginger. Fresh ginger is great in a salad. So every time I make a salad, it could be different. So that's all I'm using today. I'm using these three things, extra virgin olive oil, umabashi vinegar, and some smoked paprika. So I'm going to stir that up. This smells so wonderful. You could smell what I'm smelling right now. If you want to go with a bottle salad dressing or something heavier, you can do that. I think Casey was so quick to always say, or use, you know, another dressing. He wanted, I don't think he wanted you to like suffer through this and say, oh, this is such a drudgery. I have to force myself through it. So if a bottle salad dressing or something, you know, creamy is really that important to you, I think that's fine. I just really want to encourage you to try to smell and see and taste all these wonderful vegetables in here. I mean, this is, this is beautiful and it smells so good. And especially because it's largely local, it's just so nutritious. You're going to feel differently when you eat this kind of salad and do it this way. So if you can, try the lighter dressing, try the olive oil dressing, because it's going to have everything just um, be a little bit more pronounced, the flavors and the colors of the salad. Okay, now we're done making our salad. I'm going to transfer it to a serving plate. This, for me, I want to mention is a one-person serving size. If I'm going to have nothing but raw vegetables for a meal, it's got to be substantial for me. So I like to eat a large amount. But I've been doing this for a long time. If it takes a while for you to get used to it and you want to just start with a smaller amount, that's okay. I will say that if you were making a salad about this size and it was going to be for two people, then I would double the gelatin because then you're only getting half the gelatin. So if, this, if you think this is two serving sizes, then put in a whole teaspoon of gelatin. Before I serve it, I'm going to put on a little bit of garnish of some avocado. Avocado is technically a fruit, but it's not sweet like a fruit. And the USDA lists it on vegetable lists because nutritionally it's closer to a vegetable than it is a fruit. Casey didn't talk a lot about avocados. He told a couple people they had a lot of iron in them and they could be good for something. But, um, but um, I think if you're getting used to eating just raw vegetables, it's kind of a treat. It just makes it a little creamier. I think it's a great addition to the salad, and I don't think you would have objected. And then one more little sort of stretch. I throw on top a few organic raw pumpkin seeds. Again, not technically a raw vegetable, but thicker inside a raw vegetable, so I don't think Mr. Casey would mind. Anyway, I've been doing this for a really long time. I think it's a fabulous way to eat. I love it. I probably do it maybe three to four days a week. Some people, he said, do this once a day every day. Some people have said once a week and then everything in between. So you can try it out. Just see if you like it. Um, I can't specifically say this has done one thing or another for me, but I will tell you that I go to a doctor once a year for a well visit and he reads my results from all my blood tests and he goes down the list one after the other after another and in range. In range this. This is that. This measures this. In range. In range. In range. And I sit there. Not that I'm in perfect health, but my blood's in pretty good shape. I sit there and I listen to him, and I always think to myself, it's that gelatin and raw vegetables. I just know it's, do it's doing something inside me that I can't see. So that's my little testimonial. I can't prove it, but I believe that. Okay, there you have it. It's your very gorgeous, mostly local, uh, above the ground, below the ground balance, alkaline boost, grated, chopped, with gelatin, lightly dressed, salad. Please try this. I think you'll like it. Enjoy and see you next time.